Today's Patreon raffle review comes courtesy of KSCG Guy. If you'd like to be just like this beautiful person and have your idea for a video come to life, why not consider donating to the Patreon? There's a link in the description below, and now enough of that, on to the stuff you actually want to hear about. The video that you clicked on. It's that time again, friends. Time to go back to the old VeggieTales well and talk about, well, guess what? This has been something I've wanted to talk about for the longest time. Jonah, a VeggieTales movie, is a lot of things. It's a big childhood memory for a lot of people who grew up on VeggieTales. It's a decent source of laughs for when you're revisiting it as an adult. And it's also the entry in the VeggieTales series that ruined everything. Yeah, if it wasn't for this movie, we probably wouldn't have gotten things like Sweet Pea Beauty, The Little House That Stood, Noah's Ark, or, of course, that Netflix thing that we don't talk about, yeah. But is it really fair to blame all those disasters on one film? Yeah, I'd say so. Phil Vischer, creator of VeggieTales and voice of half the cast, up until recently, but that's a story for another day. Anyways, he said that a lot of people think that Big Idea was taken down because of a lawsuit they got into in the early 2000s. Vischer claims that while yes, that was a factor, it wasn't the sole reason. In fact, there were lots of reasons that caused Big Idea to go bankrupt. But in looking at all the evidence he provides, the story he tells, and the overall financial records of the company before, during, and after production, I'd say that this was the biggest reason that Big Idea went under, and then subsequently sent VeggieTales down a dark, dark road from which it would never recover. So let me tell you why I believe that Jonah, a VeggieTales movie, is what doomed the entire series. <laughs> So firstly, Big Idea Productions, as I'm sure many of you know now, was founded by Phil Vischer and just a couple of his friends, making a CG children's show and it took the world by storm. Eventually. The first sales weren't that great, but it caught on eventually, becoming a household name in the Christian circles and even secular ones. It even got made fun of by Drawn Together, which isn't that hard to make happen, but still, it counts for something. In the early 2000s, 8 out of the 10 top-selling Christian videos were VeggieTales. Needless to say, Big Idea was doing really well because of VeggieTales, but then, one day, out of the blue, that wasn't true anymore. Sales were dropping like crazy, and there was no rebound in sight. They needed to do something to fix this, and quickly, otherwise, the whole company might shut down. And the best way to do that in their eyes was to do what they've wanted to do since Larry Boy and the Rumor Weed, and that was to make a full, feature-length movie starring the VeggieTales cast. Yeah, I don't really see how that works either. You spend a whole bunch of money that you probably don't really have in order to make an expensive risk that might not pay off? Uh, Alright. Sure. But then, of course, as soon as they decided to enter production, in Phil Vischer's own words, everything started to go wrong. Way back in the early days of Big Idea, they wanted to do an adaptation of Noah's Ark. But considering the fact that there was a bunch of fur involved, they felt they weren't exactly ready to do that, given that fur isn't exactly the easiest thing to animate. So instead, they decided to switch their focus on the second easiest thing to animate, easiest in major quotes there, water. Which means that the story of Noah turned into the story of Jonah. By 1999, the first draft was written, and then the vision just kept growing and growing. Phil Vischer has gone on record saying that back then, he wanted to be like the Christian Walt Disney, basically having this giant media empire, but instead of Walt focusing on lots of things, he would focus on the Word of God, and VeggieTales would be the center of it, but not necessarily the entirety. What does this have to do with Jonah? Well, it shows that Big Idea was having Action 52 Syndrome, and thinking more of a franchise rather than an individual product. While it goes without saying that there was a lot more time, attention, effort, and love put into Jonah than ever went into Action 52, it was a bit worrying that they were thinking this far in the future for something that could make or break the company. What if Jonah didn't do well? 
What would that do to Big Idea if VeggieTales was starting to dip in sales? Well, they thought of exactly that, and they came out with not one, not two, but three new shows to help give more money to the company, which ended up going towards Jonah. These shows were VeggieTales Live, 321 Penguins, and The Cartoon Adventures of Larry Boy. All three of these turned out to be, uh, let's just say, disappointments. Now, I'm not talking about the overall quality here, I'm just talking about what happened during and after production. VeggieTales Live was really expensive to make, and whatever it made, the company would have to turn around and spend exactly that on the next show. It just wasn't worth having around. 321 Penguin started off doing really well, but then starting around the amazing carnival of complaining, sales started to dip into the uh-oh territory, and they only sank worse and worse with each passing release. If they kept going, they almost certainly would have lost more money than they spent. And then the cartoon adventures of Larry Boy, who boy, I remember seeing this one firsthand. A lot of parents, soccer moms, didn't really like that this show looked quote unquote cheap, like something you would find on Cartoon Network. Because it kinda was. It was being animated by the same group that did the later seasons of the Powerpuff Girls. And apparently, because a lot of these parents didn't like how cheap it looked, they decided to skip out on the series. Which meant that, of course, it wasn't worth having around. So, these series that were meant to help bolster Jonah only ended up putting Big Idea in a far worse position. You know what else put them in a worse position? All the new hires that they brought on to work on Jonah. Despite the fact that the script was written in 1999, production couldn't begin until a year later because, simply put, Big Idea didn't have the manpower yet. So they had to hire a bunch of animators to help get this thing done, but that didn't stop it from going way behind schedule, which, let me tell you, does not exactly make investors happy. And with all these new people being brought on and the production getting extended again and again, simply put, Jonah was starting to become a money pit for the company. To quote Phil Vischer, Originally, I had hoped to produce and release the film for less than 15 million total. When the final production and marketing costs came in at nearly twice that, our hopes of recouping our investment vanished. In the end, our distributor got all its marketing investment back, but not a penny made it back to Big Idea to recoup the money that we'd spent producing the film. So yeah, let's talk about those earnings. Phil Vischer said that the movie would need to make $25 million in order to break even. Well, don't worry folks. Jonah grossed more than $25 million. It grossed 25.6. Most of that was domestic because the only overseas market it saw was Russia. And there it only made a measly $34,002. Yikes. Not helping was the fact that it was released around the time as Red Dragon. I don't know why they thought releasing it around this time was a good idea. It's kind of like when Disney released Winnie the Pooh the same weekend as Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Like, come on. With the kind of movie you're putting out, you can't compete with that. And then finally, despite having a decent opening weekend at $6.2 million, it fell 41% the second weekend, and it never recovered. And then, wouldn't you know it, right after all this happened, Big Idea got involved in a lawsuit with their distributor, Lyric Studios. Because they lost, Big Idea had to pay Lyric Studios $14 million. This decision would get overturned later in 2005, but Phil never saw any of that money come back. Because by then, it was already too late. Jonah had taken so much away from them that they had to lay off a whole bunch of their staff. All those new people that were brought on for Jonah? Gone. All those expansions they were wanting to make? Cancelled. Phil's dream of becoming the Christian Walt Disney? No longer gonna happen. But all those layoffs weren't enough to save the company. They had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and were eventually bought by Classic Media. Classic Media overall was pretty good to Big Idea. The only major change that really seemed to happen was that Big Idea would no longer do the VeggieTales animation in-house, but rather would outsource it to other studios. During this time, Phil Vischer was taking a step back from the whole company, but he was still involved to a degree. 
And they didn't try another movie again until The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, which failed even worse. And that caused the company to shift hands once again to DreamWorks. Oh boy. Alright, so no shade against DreamWorks or anything, but they're not exactly the ones who I would picture doing a good job with the Christian market. And sure enough, they didn't. They took a look at VeggieTales and went, you know what this really needs to bring up sales? Fairy tales. Let's do that. Wouldn't you believe it? This didn't help sales at all. In fact, a lot of people felt that the new direction was trying to secularize the show. And sure enough, they would be proven correct. The show eventually ceased production of the direct-to-video line and instead had a Netflix adaptation, proving all the critics correct. This show was not exactly well liked by fans or Christian families. Since then, the show has struggled to maintain relevancy. It had the VeggieTales show to mixed reactions, I've honestly never seen it. And then the entire main cast just got fired because they <gasps> wanted to be more involved with the show they created! Yeah, those monsters. They have a new cast going with their podcast and everything, but if they ever decide to bring the show back in animated form, I guess they might need some new voice actors, huh? And I'm kind of well known for my VeggieTales impressions, so all I have to say is... If you want to bring me on board, think again! You already played that bridge pretty well! Yeah, everyone's really mad at you! Besides, who can replace Phil Vischer and Mike Naraki? No one, that's who! By this point, the series has already become a peon nightmare! from which I don't think there's any returning. I don't even get why they had to do that. Was it really that offensive to let them, I don't know, work on the show that they created? From the sounds of it, they wanted to be more than just voice actors, which probably means that they'd have to get paid a lot more. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, now I'm all on their side. I wholeheartedly agree. Paying people more for a better service. Ha! <laughs> What an utterly preposterous idea! So yeah, the show's kind of broken at this point, but why put all the blame on Jonah? Like I mentioned, there were a lot of other factors at play. The other shows bombing, the sales of VeggieTales itself declining, and that lawsuit with Lyric Studios. Well, here's why I say that Jonah is the cause of all this mess. With 321 Penguins, the cartoon adventures of Larry Boy, and VeggieTales Live, they probably wouldn't have been made as soon as they were if it wasn't for Jonah. Phil Vischer said that the main reason he made those shows when he did was to give more money to Jonah. But all this ended up doing was wasting time, resources, and money. If they waited till later to make these shows, they still might not have done as well as they'd hoped, but at least they wouldn't have been as detrimental to the company. As for the sliding sales and the Lyric Studios debacle, on their own, those two are pretty bad. But if it was just those two, there's a chance that Big Idea could have survived. A chance, not a big chance. It's like that Dumb and Dumber thing, one in a million. So you're saying there is a chance? Jonah prevented any chance of the company saving itself. It was such a financial pit for them that any sort of hit to them, not even necessarily a sucker punch like the Lyric Studios thing, but even something small like the next episode not doing well, could have destroyed them. And had the Lyric Studios lawsuit not have happened at all, Big Idea still wouldn't have been safe. They still would have had to have stripped themselves down, firing all those new hires, reducing their plans, and going back to where they were five years ago. And without a steady flow of income to fall back on, that wouldn't have been a worthwhile investment anymore. As much as I love Jonah, a VeggieTales movie, as much as I still laugh at some of the stuff today and have full intention of showing my future kids this film, I can't deny that it's the reason that the series is where it's at today. With all those fairy tale entries, cutting corners to make ridiculous animation errors, the secularized tone, the revival, kicking Phil and Mike out to make the podcast, and now the whole franchise just wandering aimlessly looking for a new direction. This could have all been avoided had they been more careful and waited even longer to do Jonah. Remember when I said that they were making this film to bring the company back? Yeah, 
turns out all those red flags were there for a reason. If there's any lesson to learn from this, it's to be careful. If you've got a company, not even necessarily a media company, just a company in general, you can't just run headfirst into something that seems like it'll be a big hit. Because what if it's not? You could be ruined. So whatever you feel called to do, whatever you have big dreams of accomplishing, remember, don't end up like Big Idea. If you see a Jonah, and you really, really gotta go down that road, be careful. Because I've seen what happens if you're not, and trust me, you don't want to end up there. It's not fun. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What are your thoughts on Jonah? And do you know of any other stories like this? Because I always kind of find these interesting. As sad as they are, they always kind of, I don't know, not necessarily resonate with me. That's not the right word, but they really strike a chord with me. And, you know, I feel a lot of things when I hear these stories. I feel sad that the company fails. I feel angry because it fails. I also facepalm because a lot of the bad choices that they made become really obvious in hindsight. I think you get what I'm saying, and I'm sure I'm not alone here. So let's move right on to thanking the Patreon executive producers. And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, the Masters of Fate, Manny Paredes and Kev, and our executive producers, Unkale, Blackjack, H.R. Hoffman, Ryan Williams, Who Else But Zane, YouTube Milkwad, Edward Haas, Albert Robinson, I Am Fove, and Aaron Vasquez. If you'd like to be just like these wonderful people and have your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then why not donate to the Patreon? It doesn't cost a lot, and there's a link in the description below for your convenience. Alright friends, thanks for watching. See you guys next time!